Hi, my name is Nick Jeffries of New Projects and you're watching New Weekly, episode 18. This property must be four and a half, five thousand square feet. It's got a swimming pool in the garden and the couple wants to refurb the whole property, adding a massive kitchen extension. And I think they want to create the pool, but maybe putting a building over the top of the pool. Two nice projects. Uh, we want to impress the architect because he's really uh, influential in the Ealing area. We've got to draft a document to tell the council and the planning officers how the vehicles coming in, the grab lorries, are going to get to the site. I've been going through Trello, which is like a database for all our clients potential clients, you know, projects that are meant, uh, waiting to be priced, going through, just updating all of the notes on there, calling through um, to some of our clients. So it's Monday morning and I thought I'd just pop down to see Zoltan to give you an update on what's been happening. Uh, first thing I got in, we had lots of new phone calls, lots of new inquiries over the weekend. So I've been working my way through those. One was a really big property in Staines. Now, Staines is a little bit outside of our area, but this property must be four and a half, five thousand 5,000 square feet. It's got a swimming pool in the garden and the couple wants to refurb the whole property, adding a massive kitchen extension. And I think they want to create the pool, but maybe putting a building over the top of the pool. So it's in inside rather than just outside. So watch this space. Will, he only lives in Ascot, so he's going to pop and see them on um, on Friday with Will O'Brien, the architect. So let's see what happens there. Uh, and another one, the um, Oliver Fish, who I met last week, he's a off-market estate agent, gets some beautiful deals. So he's offered us something in a W14, which is a muse house. It's got planning to build a basement under the footprint of the house and also to add one level on top. So making it a four story little muse house. So I think the asking price is 1.2 million and potentially after you've increased all the square footage, it could be worth 2.2, 2.3 easily. Um, other news, we've got a new car. The Tesla's gone. That went back because that was contract hire. And we've got ourselves a new Range Rover P400, I think it's E, electric. It's a two litre hybrid. And um, we've had it for a couple of days now. I don't really want to put too many miles on the clock because you know I live on the south coast and I'm traveling up every day. So where the Tesla was amazing, all I had to do is plug it in at home, because at home I've got Tesla wall chargers, I mean batteries, and I've got solar panels on the, on the roof. Energy costs were really low. So the only downfall with the ranging, it's gonna cost more money to get to work every day. But I'm not gonna put too many miles in it. I'm not gonna go cruising around town. I'm just gonna use it to come up and down. And hopefully over the next sort of couple of months, we get a little bit more pennies in and I'm gonna buy myself a little run around for in London. Maybe another little electric car. At 11 o'clock, we've got Sophie Stanbury coming in. She is a interior designer and uh, she wants to introduce me to one of her new uh, partners called Lucia. And um, I think they're gonna come along and uh, we're gonna try and do some work together. Um, I met Sophie probably 12 months ago. Uh, during lockdown and uh, we tried to get some projects up and running but it's been a bit slow but now we're ready to do some collaboration and uh, watch your space um, have a look at her on social media she's very very prolific on social media she's got loads of followers on her personal account and she's also got a, a large following on her business account on instagram so check her out sophie stanbury uh, interior design um, this afternoon 
Uh, Zoltan is going to be shooting off to Sir John Lyon House to do some uh, B-rolls of the apartment on the Thames. Virel, our subcontractor, has really driven that project hard. The property is all stripped out, the um, herring blown flooring is going down and apparently it's looking really amazing. So he's gonna get some shots there. And also I think he's gonna be visiting Beaufort Street to do some filming before we get in there and start on the 1st of uh, March. The client has already stripped it out and I think he's already prepared the lower ground floor because there was a lot of damp. So they've screeded, the, they've put some membrane down and done some kind of waterproofing on the walls. Um, so, but other news, everything's good. Nothing, nothing negative to report so far this week. Um, even though it is Monday, stressful, you know, there's lots of things happening, lots of balls up in the air at the moment. But um, let's catch up a bit later on. Every time that you are closing your eyes, I will be beside you. And my heart will glide across the miles to fly right to you. I long to be with you in all the places you have been. So today I am time traveling. So that is the front door, Beaufort Street, Chelsea, which is a prime location. It's already been stripped out by the client. And um, as you see, when you go through, all the floors, all the floorboards are being exposed. The, the plaster has been taken off the walls, well, in some locations. And um, yeah, this is the lower ground floor where we see that there has been a damp uh, coarse treatment to the walls waterproof renders gone in there there must have been a problem at some point because I remember when we went in there in the summer um, it was stinking and black mold was everywhere um, the upper floors as you see lovely lovely high ceilings um, this property is gonna look amazing when it's finished um, we haven't priced up for the second fix yet. We're only going to do the extensions out the back on the ground and first floors, which will open up the rooms, making it really beautiful stepping out onto a terrace so you can overlook the garden. But I think the client was in here. I don't know, the, the person who lived there before was in here for like 40 years. It was untouched, just the perfect property to buy to increase the value by adding maximum interior design great second fix items and uh, the owners i think they're gonna they're gonna keep it for a few years and then um you know you know live in there for a while and you know appreciate the the, the area and uh, maybe flip it on in the future but yeah so this is um beaufort street in chelsea Watch this space because you're going to see some fantastic before and afters. And every couple of weeks, Zoltan will go down there and uh, shoot some video. So next on the list was Sir John Lyon House on the Thames and uh, we've been on site now for two weeks. So as you see, the boys are progressing a lot. Flooring's going down, skirting's going down, uh, they're preparing the walls and the boys are really working well. The client is so happy and uh, she can see every day there is progress. So. Um, Again, every couple of weeks, we'll show you uh, how the project's coming along. You'll get inside information on how the boys are supplying their 
uh, materials and any dramas which are unfolding and um, look at Virel, the project manager, is putting down the herringbone floor. That looks amazing. Well done Virel, look he's a perfectionist that boy. But yeah, I like, I like to see all the boys in their high vis looking smart. Construction site looks clean and tidy as always. But yeah, let's keep an eye on this project and uh, we have more interesting content coming to you soon. This week I've been creating documents on Word so it makes it easier for us to like view the jobs and what jobs are on at the moment with the clients, what architects, so it's just an easier view of what's going on and I've been dragging it into the Dropbox for everyone in our team to see. Mm, okay, and uh, I've seen you doing Canva as well, just a, a little bit of... Oh yeah, and I've been doing a little bit of Canva as well for mm. our TikTok page, which we're trying to You're get awesome. someone with. Yeah. That's good. Well done. Easy? Um, I've been going through Trello, which is like a database for all our clients potential clients, you know, projects that are meant, uh, waiting to be priced, going through, just updating all of the notes on there, calling through um, to some of our clients at the moment, just introducing myself, so obviously I'm customer service as well, so if they needed anything, if there's any questions, just seeing how they are, um, and uploading new jobs as well that we have now coming in, so um, I've been putting them onto Trello as well. Um, and just going through my, d I've got a data, oh, I was going to lock, it's locked now anyway, or it's died. Um, <laughs> and I've just uh, been going onto my Excel spreadsheet um, and updating on there as well. So we can read off what's good, what's not good, mm -hmm. what's been, you know, for, on my behalf for the calls that I also make. So. Mm, that's very good, well done. But I heard some news, good news, 2022, you're already generating some yes. works from, from people like architects. Right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, so, um, so we've got lots of jobs coming through from the architects um, and we've Nick's been viewing this week, last week, next week as well, so we've got lots booked in, so we've got a positive 2022 so far. Mm, well done. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> keep it on. Yeah, yeah, keep it up now. <laughs> thank you guys. Thank you. So it's Wednesday and it's around 1 p.m. in the afternoon. Myself and Will, we've been visiting two new clients and these clients come from one new architect and the architect came from Izzy hammering the phones. So well done Izzy, you potentially landed two new jobs uh, for the beginning of uh, 2022. Uh, the, one of the jobs was a large five metre kitchen extension and the other job, literally in the next road, was a five metre kitchen extension, a loft conversion and a full refurb. So two nice projects. Uh, we want to impress the architect because he's really uh, influential in the Ealing area and Will was talking to them about potentially building them out of SIPs. 
So as you know, SIPS is the new uh, technology, alternatively, that, that we use instead of uh, uh, traditional construction. Um, so at the moment, we're just heading up past Chelsea Football Club into Chelsea to have a little drive, see, see, check on a few sites. But um, we're in the new motor, the Range Rover P400E. So it's a hybrid. When you plug it in overnight, it gets you about 25, 26 miles on just full electric, which not a lot, but what that does when it comes in with the, uh, with the, with the petrol, it gets quite a nice distance. So from uh, Portsmouth where I am to Fulham and back, which is about 120 miles, that's it. That's it for about 25 quid and on a charge. So it's not too bad. Um, but we're gonna park up somewhere nice in uh, Belgravia and have a little walk around and we can show you the exterior and the interior of this brand new Range Rover. So let's go and have a look. Belgravia, Belgrave Square. We've parked up the rangey so you can have a little look around. So as you see, she is mint, but a little bit dirty at the moment. Go and have a look. So because it's hybrid, we can charge it in the evening. So you open this flap here, you push that button here, and the cable goes wallop in there. And during the night, it gets you 26 miles-ish, something like that. So we're on the inside of this beautiful autobiography P400E and some of the extras you've got, because this is autobiography, you've got the Alcantara uh, sort of headlining, heated steering wheels, uh, two-tone leather, air conditioning seats, heated seats, you've got a fridge in here, you've got heated back seats, um, TV, it's amazing. The only thing this doesn't do, which I wish it did do, what a Tesla does, is drive itself. That's the only thing, you've got to keep your hands on the wheels and keep the car on the road still. But it's a nice motor to drive um, with some presence on the road. Um, but as I said, look, this is not gonna be my everyday car because it's gonna be too expensive to run. This is just for the family and I'm gonna be using it to get to work for the next maybe six to eight weeks until we save some pennies and I'm gonna get myself another Tesla. But this is the new toy for Team New. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, I love it. I've had many Land Rovers and Range Rovers in my time, but um, this is a nice one, especially because it's hybrid. Um, you can easily drive around town with one charge, 26 miles. You know, if I could literally plug it in in London, when I'm up in the office, that'd be enough to get you around for free. So it just wafts around on electricity. But uh, right, let's head back to the office. This is 
results on that. <laughs> this is what happens when we walk out. <laughs> Look at one. This is a motivated teenager. What are you guys up to? Jesus Christ. Have you had anything? On Canva. Canva. Okay. Yeah, she's on Canva. You could go in now, right now. Yeah. Okay. Wow. There's probably that? a bit of Snapchat coming up somewhere personal. Snapchat. Nice. <laughs> well done. She's, deep. she's she's hydrating herself. Look. She's a good girl. I mean, coffee and water, yeah? One of them is soaked water out, the other one is hydrated. <laughs> and biscuit, read it. That's that, that's that. Is it? How are you? Have you had a phone call? Have I been making phone calls? Yeah. Um, I've done a couple today, but I've been catching up with current clients or possible clients. I've just been. So um, has it been positive today? It has been, yeah, there's been some positive ones, yeah, there has, mm. have been, and I've just been doing updates and adding new jobs onto the Twitter. So are you, what are you doing? Are you, are, are you dialing new numbers or the repeat numbers? Mostly repeat numbers now, because yeah. um, I've gone through the whole list, I've gone through... Is there, different, <laughs> is there different phone numbers for different people in the architecture practice? Yes, yeah. some of them don't work there anymore, right. so or some of them do, but they don't, that's not in contact, so I've, yeah. gone, um, I've gone through all the Excel spreadsheet and I've just made it like my own, so I know which ones are only positive, so I can only go mm -hmm. on positive calls now, but I'm going back on myself, so then I know which ones are positive and I'll go back on them, and hopefully, well, most of them are picking up now, so you can have your viewing, so, yeah. It does work, doesn't it? Yeah. Well done. Thanks. So good, we want more. So someone left a question on last week's video about can we go into more detail about the procedures of building a basement? Well, we all know a basement needs planning approval. Planning approval is the easy part. It's the conditions which take time to sign off. So here's a little summary of what the conditions consist of. One of them can be a site construction method plan. Um, so this is a document where you tell the council exactly what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. It could be what are you going to do about noise? What are you going to do about dust? What are you going to do about vehicles and unloading materials? What time of day are you going to be working? So many individual items need to be mentioned in this document so the council know exactly what you are going to do. And it takes time to produce as well. Also, a traffic management plan. So because we work in West London, some boroughs like Kensington and Chelsea and Westminster, they want a traffic management plan. So this means we've got to draft a document to tell the council and the planning officers how the vehicles coming in, the grab lorries, are going to get to the site, what's going to happen when they get to the site and how are they going to leave the site, what direction. So it's crazy isn't it, they want to know where the vehicle's coming from, how are you getting to the site and what way are they going to leave. And if you don't get it right they do send people down to watch what's going on. Because there's lots of basements going on at the same time, Sometimes the grab lorries come and they block up the road for a good 15 to 20 minutes at a time while they parked outside the, the skip on the road with the hoarding and they take the earth away. And there has been bad experiences of the grab lorries coming along and damaging cars, maybe knocking wind mirrors off and causing mayhem. Because if you do live next door to a project which is having a basement, it's quite noisy and it's quite dusty and dirty. So it's up to the contractor to let the council know, what are we gonna do about all this? What are we gonna do about the noise, dust, dirt, traffic? Um, so 
you've got planning for a basement and one of the conditions would be we need to get a geotechnical survey done. So that means we need to get a third party company in. We may need to do some trial holes and they will take some samples of the earth three, four, five meters down, depending on how deep you're going, because they will see if there's any water down there. What is the, what is the earth made of? Is it sandy? Is it sort of just normal earth? Is there rubble? Is there, is there an old building foundation down there? So you need to know what's down there. And that rapport could affect the bill cost, depending on what is down there. Um, in Kensington and Chelsea and Westminster, they want the site registered for considerate construction. And this is like an independent body where you can register the site or you can register the company on the site. And basically they come round every month or every six weeks to have a look how you're getting on. They make a, a report on how clean the site is. Are all the health and safety signs visible? Is the pavement nice and clean and tidy? Have we spoke to the neighbors next door? Do they know what's going on? Is there any complaints for the neighbors? And they work out a score. And basically, Kensington and Chelsea, they love that. And you can't start any basement job or any job in uh, Kensington and Chelsea without a considerate con contractor's uh, registration. And for health and safety, obviously, risk assessments and method statements especially when you want to get your party wall signed off because a party wall survey is going to want uh, risk assessments and method statements for absolutely everything if you're uh, obviously doing a basement they're going to want to know how are you going to do the basement what method are you going to do the basement where the steel is going so there's so much documentation needs to be drafted so when uh, mr and mrs jones from chelsea want a basement they don't understand all the paperwork what goes along with it hours and hours and time consuming days just preparing the paperwork that's why when you go to someone like new we do this for you if you don't pay the right person to do the job you're going to have major problems um, the construction program you know so from day one site setup strip out demolition structure whatever we're going to do the whole program so that usually the program on a basement lasts for eight months to a year so that program has got to document the journey from start to finish and that program changes so there's going to be many many revisions all the time which the project managers will be doing and then what may be required as well would be a third party monitoring company and what they basically do, they stick little tags on certain parts of the properties around and then have a laser monitoring any movement. So if it, if it drops by one millimeter, it goes on sort of a, an amber alert or something and they come down. But every two weeks they come down with their laser and they mark if the property's moved. So as you see, Planning is the easy part. The detail, the conditions is the most important part and it takes so much time. But if any of you guys out there are wanting to do a basement under the footprint of your home, give us a call. So it's Friday morning and we are outside our first viewing, which is in Staines, a beautiful, massive, detached property where the client has just bought it. I think they picked up the keys yesterday. They want a complete refurb, big extension, and uh, they want to, uh, there's a swimming pool in the garden already, but I think they want to make it uh, indoors. So we're gonna have a little look. Uh, Jemima is sitting in the car, she can stay there and uh, the client is about to turn up. So let's see, 
uh, Will O'Brien will be here as well, the architect. Uh, he lives locally, so let's go and have a look once they get here. The viewing went well this morning. I met the lady and I met her doggy who came along for the journey. Um, the house was built in 1993 and it hasn't been touched since then. So it's very dated. It's got a really old fashioned kitchen extension, sort of PVC. It has got an outdoor swimming pool, but she doesn't want it outdoor, so she wants it uh, a structure built over the top of it. And um, the master needs to be moved from the front of the house to the back of the house, and she wants the two bedrooms knock through so she can have a complete suite uh, for her and her husband. Her two sons, they're in university in America, so they will be back, you know, maybe two or three times a year, so they need their own bedrooms. Uh, she wants a gym, she wants a big open plan, kitchen, dining, entertaining area, because she has loads of friends around. She's really keen to get this project up and running because at the moment they're renting an apartment near the house. They only picked up the keys yesterday. So Will O'Brien, the architect, he's gonna create a couple of concept design drawings which can go over to the client. She can then say which one she likes. And I said to her, look, let's try and get a planning application submitted before the end of the month. So we've got two weeks to get it submitted. Then once it's submitted, we can work on a budget estimate. I have asked her what kind of budget is she working to? Because it's not worth us designing a scheme which they can't afford to build out. So we've asked a question. Let's see if she comes back with a number once she's spoken to her husband. We should see. It's always easier when we know what numbers to work with because otherwise it wastes so much time. Um, what other news? Well, it's been a really busy week for new inquiries. We must have had five in this week. Uh, not large projects, some, you know, kitchen extensions, loft conversions, mansards, pod rooms, uh, which if we do win them, we just pass them on to our trusted subcontractors like Viral or Billy. Um, we've got a, a Zoom call booked in for Monday with Spencer, the owner of Vicarage Gate. He's the chap who lives in Singapore. So he bought this property which Will and Will went to see last week and he wants a basement under the lower ground floor. So Will has created some concept design drawings, two schemes, both with swimming pools, spas, gyms, saunas, you know, amazing. Uh, the difference between one's got an internal courtyard, one hasn't. So again, let's see what the client's budget is. I have mentioned a ballpark number of a million quid. I think it's gonna be more now because if he's gonna do a swimming pool, spa, jacuzzi, and sauna, three levels down, could be 1.5 mil. But again, because it's in such a super prime area, right near Kensington Palace. Pound per square foot could be 2,500, 3,000 pound a square foot. And it all depends what the finishing is like. Um, so that's that one. And then I had a conversation with uh, the client in Priory Avenue in Richmond. Now this chap wants complete refurb, a basement, a loft, a pod, and um, concept design drawings have been completed. I've sent them over a budget estimate. Now, I think it's just a time he needs to consider 
time scales, so we need to get the application submitted. He would like to start the project this summer, but realistically, it could be delayed to January 2023 because he's got a son who has um, special needs and they're more worried about him being stressed out because they've already moved into this house quite recently so they just want to sort of calm down let's get the design sorted let's get the planning approval through and uh, maybe stick it in the calendar for uh, January next year which I'm happy about I'm cool about that we've got so much going on so this month February we've got Chesham Road starting we've had Stafford Mansions already start um, we're gonna have North End Road start that's the, the that's the uh, penthouse on the airspace in Fulham that's three February March Beaufort Street Chelsea duplex apartment ground and lower full refurb super prime area um, and what we want to win is Montpellier Street so um, that's the one we want so lots lots bubbling away lots of positive things which can happen you know we don't know what's gonna come in today tomorrow the next day you know I've got the amount of leads we're getting through is more than we've ever had in the last 15 years. And it's because of creating content like this. You know, even though I keep telling everyone the magic, the secret to get the phones ringing, our competition won't do it. Because talking to camera, putting yourself out there, you're gonna get a lot of haters but you're going to get more people who love what you do. So um, I'm happy, you know, yes, people think this is a joke, but we know what we're doing. We've got a great team now. We've got a guy called Guy coming on board. Hopefully we can land him next week. He's going to, he's going to do a week with us to see how we can sort of fit him in. But he's a... Uh, uh, Oxford graduate, super intelligent, very cool, knows what he's talking about, um, in construction, has got some kind of construction knowledge, but he's so, so bright, so well connected. So Guy, if you're watching this, um, we're gonna do whatever it takes to bring you on board because we know you're a quality, quality young man. And um, I know you can bring things to the table, which we have thought of yet. And that's what we want. We want to attract entrepreneurial people, like-minded people who love the brand. So brand, brand NU can be anything we want. So if you are out there and you think, well, you know, I've got this business idea and um, it'll be fantastic if you can get behind it, let us know. What is this idea? You know, we would need someone to come on board to, to run the business, whatever it may be. It could be structured glass. It could be solar. It could be um, audio visual. It could be anything. But we just need like-minded, entrepreneurial, super driven people to come on board. So if you've got an idea, just give us a call. 02077316841. So that's another week and another episode done and dusted. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like and share. I'll see you all next week.